Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each and every time I come at you, I bring you two questions to help you get ready for your CISSP exam. Um, this is kind of a special one because this is number 100. Uh, 100 of these I've done and put up here, which means that there are now a total of 200 questions that I've asked you, or actually there's 198 because I'm about to ask you two more. But um, awesome. Uh, if you've watched them all, I can't help but laugh. You probably have uh, bad dreams of seeing my face and then probably hearing me say the same thing each time I start the video over and over and over could probably cause people to have nightmares. So uh, thank you for watching these. And uh, if you would please let me know in the comments if you think that these are of value to you. Um, I'm going to guess you wouldn't be watching them if you didn't think they were of value to you. Eh, but maybe you got to tell me. Give me, some, give me some feedback. Tell me something. Okay. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into question number one. Right. Users on your sales team access multiple third-party web-based applications, and they have different credentials for each one of the applications they access. Um, you want to go in and deploy a single sign-on solution that's going to allow them to access those different web apps, but you want them to be able to be authenticated using their domain credentials. My question for you is, is given the list of choices that I show you here, which of them um, is actually the best choice for you to go in and make use of? Choice number one is your best choice, the security assertion markup language, SAML, SAML, however you want to pronounce it, SAML. Um, SAML is just that. SAML allows you to go in and have an identity provider, which in this case would be your, your local directory, if you're using Active Directory. And then you have uh, the service provider, which has the, um, the, the, which is the third party app that you want to go in and access. And as long as those service providers support it and you're using, you know, federated, uh, services for your Active Directory deployment, then you can go in and set this stuff up and then your users can go in and actually be able to authenticate to those third-party apps and uh, use SAML to do it. Second choice is JSON RPC. Uh, no, that is a data format. JSON formatted data for doing more procedure calls for like API stuff, uh, not what we're looking for here. So no, definitely not the right answer. Third choice is secure LDAP. Uh, no, uh, really also not correct. In general, we don't use LDAP across the internet, uh, even when it's secure LDAP. Uh, it's not to say you couldn't, we just don't. We have better things like SAML or SAML. Uh, so no, not the best not the best answer right there. OAuth, uh, open authorization. OAuth might've been a contender for you to go in and think about because uh, it would be the wrong choice, but um, OAuth is an authorization protocol that would allow you to go in and, and be able to selectively access certain components of uh, say a user's account, um, we see this kind of stuff with uh, things like Facebook and stuff like that, where you know you have an app that wants to access your Facebook contacts or you, you know some other aspect like that. And OAuth is the protocol that goes in and creates that authorization, which effectively gives a, a, a ticket to uh, to the application to be able to go in and access your content. You are the information owner, and you're able to go in and grant that authorization to do that. That's not what we're trying to do here. Um, OAuth by itself is not an authentication protocol. It's just an authorization protocol and only for a limited subset of information. And then the last choice on this list is Kerberos. No, uh, we do Kerberos internally, and the number one place that most of us probably encounter Kerberos in our lives is in an Active Directory environment with Microsoft. Uh, of course, that being said, Kerberos existed long before Microsoft started using it for Active Directory, but um, it, is, it is an authentication protocol, but it's not an authentication protocol that we use in the context of what this question is asking about, which is to be able to go in and have third parties be able to um, provide you access to resources based on your ability to authenticate to, uh, to, to a different database, which in this case would be Active Directory. So that is not the right answer. All right, question number two. Uh, which of the following values are stored on the SIM um, of a mobile phone? There's a list. Think it through. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play, and then we'll talk it out. First correct answer here is the MZ, I-M-S-I, the NZ, the International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Uh, this is a value that is stored on the SIM card and then identifies you to your provider uh, so that they can grant you, you know, service. Uh, but it is on the SIM, okay? And this is all one of the reasons why you can take your SIM out of one phone, put it in another phone, and it works because the MZ, which is on the SIM, identifies you to your provider, and the actual phone itself doesn't always matter or doesn't often matter. 
And the second choice on this list that is correct is the ICC ID, which is the Integrated Circuit Card Identification. Um, it is the serial number of the SIM card, and it is a permanent part of the SIM. Uh, in fact, if, if you have an iPhone, you probably pop your SIM out and go look at it. You can see that the ICD, if there's a number that's uh, stamped on your SIM, it's, that's the ICC ID that's usually on there. Um, so those are the two correct values. The MZ and the ICC ID are both on the actual SIM. The other answers are not correct. The IMEI, that is the International Mobile Equipment Identifier, the IMEI actually identifies your phone, your actual device. So that stays with the device, the, uh, doesn't go with the SIM. And then the other incorrect answer choice on this list was the Wi-Fi Mac, the media access control address of the wireless LAN adapter that's built into the phone. Uh, that is not built into the SIM, so that is totally not the right answer. So MZ, ICC ID. All right, woohoo, 100 questions down, and that's it. Um, see you soon.